Good morning to you from Phoenix, Arizona. I am Mark Suddeth, HurricaneTrack.com. Here it is Saturday, August 19th, 2023. And the bulk of today's update is going to be all about Hillary because it is poised to be, just like the headline there on the thumbnail and the title card says, the storm of record for California. That is not hyperbolic at all. All signs are pointing to this situation coming up, especially tomorrow and into Monday as being a catastrophic flood event for certain areas of California where there are millions of people. We're talking some big cities. Of course, we're still going to get some wind. There will be power outages. This is going to be a very disruptive event going into the first part of next week. Travel delays in some of the big airports, San Diego, L.A., Las Vegas, that's going to be a big problem. A major, major situation here. I will take a look at what's happening in the Atlantic Basin, the good news there. Nothing imminent in terms of any big impacts coming up, but we will look at that before we wrap things up at the end. Usually I look at the Pacific at the end uh, because there's usually not much impacting land, but with Hillary, this is of utmost importance, so let's get started with it. First, a little bit of good news regarding the intensity, and this will really matter for our friends here along the Baja, and that good news is that Hillary is starting to degrade a little bit. The westerly winds, the shear uh, you can't see it on this satellite imagery necessarily, but there's an upper level trough carved out here, and that's starting to send some of these westerly winds and it's helping to scoop this up, and it's degrading the core of the hurricane. You can see that better on the floater image, the zoomed in image here. There's the western side starting to erode away a little bit, but make no mistake, it is still formidable, a tremendous amount of rain and energy. And this is going to make its way up towards the Baja Peninsula first. And we don't want to ignore that. I think uh, myself included, a lot of attention being placed on the United States impacts. But let's not forget the Baja down here. No, it's not a very heavily populated area, but people do live there. People vacation there. And this is going to get a pretty big impact here from Hillary as it tracks just west of the Baja, California. And then finally making landfall when sometime uh, tomorrow afternoon it looks like it comes ashore some hey thanks windows for the chiming somewhere up there on the northwest part of the Baja Peninsula weakening as it does so but boy the rainfall that this will bring those flooding concerns will be a big problem down here as well so it's not just the United States that we're concerned with but once it does move up into Southern California, you see the center right here. That's the center of the track, the eye or the center or whatever you want to call it, making landfall in Baja, so not coming ashore from the Pacific into California any longer. That doesn't look like that'll be the case. So we should, I emphasize should there, reduce the impacts to the coast here because the flow is going to be all offshore. Now, that doesn't mean there won't be any impact, but that's a lot better than if Hillary was coming up and turning like this. Then you bring all that onshore flow to that concave coastline. That would be a much bigger problem for the immediate coast. So let's focus on what the impacts are going to be here for Southern California, Western Arizona, parts of Nevada over the next 48 hours or so. First of all, this is interesting. A tweet here from Matt. Matt is the genius behind the Weather Nerds website, meteorologist and a programmer and a PhD. Yeah, that's commendable, right? And this is a really, really neat graphic. You can see the track of Hillary, and you can see these lines here, the rainbow colored lines. That's the ECM, uh, the ECN, I'm trying to pronounce it. It's the European Ensembles. So it's a whole bunch of outcomes from the European model suite. And you can see the center of Hillary is tracking generally to the east of the ensembles just a little bit. So it's a little bit more east, and therefore, as he points out here, it is uh, tracking where sea surface temperatures are just a little bit warmer. So it's going to keep that moisture going, the energy going just a little bit longer, perhaps. All these things are going to matter for landfall in the Baja, and then eventually up into Southern California in terms of what the intensity is for the wind, and how low the air pressure will be up there, and of course the devastating rain that is headed that way. 
Interesting here from the National Weather Service out of San Diego. Hillary has sped up just a little bit along with that slight shift eastward in the track, and that results in Sunday morning. So we have 24 hours now, and then it's really going to crank up through tomorrow evening being the time frame of the most impacts. And so I think a real uh, other issue with this, a lot of these impacts are going to come in throughout the day tomorrow and then into tomorrow night. And a lot of this uh, flooding is going to be ongoing after it, it gets dark as well, especially the farther inland we're talking about. And boy, that is just very, very, if you think it's bad when it's daytime, when you get flash flooding at night, it, obviously it just makes it a lot worse when you cannot see. So that to me is a little bit concerning uh, for everybody involved that a lot of this could happen late in the day tomorrow and then once it gets dark tomorrow night there, wow, that could be a real problem. So some of the rainfall totals that they are expecting, this is all done through computer modeling, uh, some of it high resolution and you get these nice maps to really try to visualize what we are expecting and pretty much all of Southern California here, especially just away from the coast, three, four, and then maybe in some isolated spots up to 10 inches of rain, mainly due to the orographic lift, mountain ranges that are in here that help to force that rain a little harder because it squeezes it out. The air goes up the mountain, you lift that air more rapidly, and it squeezes out that moisture more efficiently and then what happens? I talked about this yesterday. Gravity takes over. All that rain has to come down into the valleys, and that could be very devastating. We've got some corridors through here, the I-10, the I-8 uh, travel corridors, and you know you get those impacted severely with heavy rain, and it could wash some areas out. And then you have uh, limited commerce and other. I mean, th those are arteries that go into Southern California. Secondary roads. I mean, this could really, really be a very impactful situation. You need to take it as such. Be ready to move quickly. If you already know that you live near uh, a dry wash and, you know, you've seen it flood before in a, a weaker situation or maybe some monsoonal or wintertime rains, this is going to exceed that by huge factors of 10. I mean, seriously, it's going to be beyond anything anybody's ever seen, potentially. Now, we don't know for sure. There's not a guarantee that all of this will happen. It's probability. But the probability is really lined up for a high-end catastrophic event. So you need to be thinking about how you're going to save your butt now. That's the most important thing. Get yourself to somewhere safe. If you know you're near a flood area, you might want to start making plans today to get out of there and uh, you know, be safe, right? The wind will be a problem. It's going to be windy. And uh, you know, we're talking some of the gusts here. These are the peak gusts, uh, the strongest winds going Sunday into Monday, 40s mostly, 30s and 40s. It just depends on how those bands set up and the circulation structure. That's kind of hard to pin down until we see what's left of Hillary's structure as it moves into Southern California. But again, the good news down here to the south, I'm going to highlight it in blue, these winds all down here will be offshore. So the winds are going to be coming in from the east and northeast generally. All right, so that's one thing that will help is it will push the Pacific away from the coast. It will it'll still be rough down there, don't get me wrong, but that's a lot better than a direct onshore flow if Hillary, let's just say, was coming up like this and you had that onshore flow coming in this way, that would be much more problematic. That is not the case in this situation. Moving on along, now let's really get into the weeds here of this flooding situation. This is from the Weather Prediction Center. Hillary expected to spread heavy rain into the southwest beginning today, while potentially lasting into Monday. The current rainfall forecast would deliver more rain in a few days to some California desert cities than they typically see in a whole year on average. And as such, an extremely rare high risk for an enormous area of Southern California. You really need to grasp the gravity of that pink and even the red, the moderate. When we look at severe weather, 
uh, and a lot of you that are going to be watching this are going to be from the southwest. And you might pay attention to some severe weather from time to time. Maybe you have a really uh, big affection for that movie Twister. It got a lot of people interested in meteorology many, many years ago. In the Great Plains and back east, when we have a moderate or a high risk for severe weather, the attention goes through the roof because that is a big, big deal. You're talking about large hail, the possibility of tornadoes, maybe violent long track tornadoes in a high risk, severe weather situation. The same in terms of rainfall impacts needs to be thought of when you see a moderate or a high risk for flooding. That means the potential for damaging, life-changing, maybe even life-ending, if you are not careful, weather, rain-related consequences are forecast for those areas. Even the yellow should not be discounted. This is a big problem over a big geographic area where a lot of people live, and it's uh, you know going to commence here in the next 12 to 18 hours. Things are going to really start to ramp up. This is another way to look at it, the overall uh, forecast, like I just showed you on the previous graphic from San Diego over here. This is just a larger um, spread out version of it. Where did it go? I lost it. Oh, right there. Um, so some of these uh, colors in here, there are some reds in there indicating, again, 10 inches plus, but the yellows and oranges covering a pretty large area. And folks, even the greens of two to four inches Pretty close to the Vegas Valley, in case you're wondering about that. That would be the Spring Mountain Range. And then over here in Death Valley, um, four to six inches. Are you kidding? In about a 24-hour period, you can see the problems here. And then that spreads on up into parts of East Central California and Southwest Nevada. And a lot of these rivers, uh, dry riverbeds, some of these could flow potentially into the Vegas Valley. So, yes, this is very very serious. All right, moving on along, just again expanding on it, not just in the desert southwest. This will impact areas around the periphery of this huge area of high pressure that we've got sitting over the nation's midsection. Dallas over here is going to hit 109 today, so that's the reason, by the way, Hillary is coming in this way, uh, is this big high pressure sitting over here, blocking it uh, from just coming straight on in to Mexico much farther to the south. So again, along this thread, this thought process of the heavy rain, it is a big deal. I want to kind of zoom in now. This is a great interactive map and show you which cities are in the moderate to high risk. Let's first uh, take a look at the high risk area. That's this pink. And uh, through the opacity settings of the map, you can kind of see Barstow's in there. So you got I-40 running through there. Uh, we slide it around a little bit. There's Victorville in the high risk. You know, these are no, like, ghost towns or whatever, people. This is a real situation for areas that are populated. 29 Palms in there. We get down here. I-10, that corridor, Cathedral City, Palm Desert, Palm Springs is in there. And you see uh, the San Jacinto Mountains there. Hopefully I said that right. Uh, that's the orographic lift right through there. This is going to get a tremendous amount of rainfall, and that's going to run down into these cities. you got I-10 through there, major population areas, major, um, I mean, you got the golf out there. You think about how picturesque these areas are. Well, that's going to change. It's going to be a real, real potential disaster for these areas. Zooming back out, look at the moderate. The red goes all the way down to the coast. So that includes San Diego and the moderate risk. So that's not, well, it's not as bad. It's, you know, it's still going to be a lot of rain and a lot of potential flooding. Vegas is in the moderate risk. You understand? Pahrump, Nevada, which is where I'm headed first. I'll talk about that before we wrap things up. Pahrump is in the moderate. But Death Valley, yes, they are in the high risk. And that goes all the way up into the mountain ranges. Not a lot of people live out here, but people visit we're going to have some roads washed out. A very, very serious situation there. So I'll put a link to this, by the way, in the description of today's video. And you can go in and check it out yourself because it will change a little bit. And it's nice that it's interactive. Um, and you can see which areas are expected to, to get these different impacts. 
All right, real quick, the rest of the tropics, a few areas to keep an eye on. Nothing imminent, as I said. You know, these different impulses, just so much energy out there, but nothing really coming together. The computer models still pretty marginal in terms of what they're showing for any development over the next few days. The first area of concern, I think, could be it's kind of a toss-up. This area in here could bring a lot of rain, and we got to keep emphasizing that rain is an impact. You know, the wind and the pressure get the headlines, but the rain typically is your, and water as a whole is one of your biggest enemies out there from these uh, systems. So, yeah, we've got to watch that piece of energy, and then there's the tropical wave in the Gulf of Mexico. And uh, let's just zoom in so we can see the Western Atlantic better. If you're curious about what that feature could do, uh, it's right here. There it is. Not much to it overall. This is late tonight into tomorrow morning. It moves pretty quickly on the southern periphery of that big high over the central United States. Tries to organize right before getting to the Texas coastline, it looks like. So much needed rain for parts of coastal Texas down here. Um, some coastal flooding, I think, is almost assured with that onshore flow. And I will start focusing on this more as we get closer to this happening. We've got a lot going on with Hillary, of course, but I'm not going to neglect this. This is still 84 hours out, so we have time to watch and see what happens. But you folks in the, uh, you know, anywhere from uh, Corpus on south definitely need to be paying attention to this. Uh, onshore flow, again, is very shallow down there, right up against the coastline. So I would expect to see some coastal flood problems and then some heavy rain and maybe some gusty winds. And the outside chance that this becomes a name storm. But again, those are just labels. I know everybody's fixated on that. we got to really think about impact, impact, impact. This will bring some impact, some positive, some negative. We will focus on that a little bit more starting uh, tomorrow as best I can. All right? Remember, of course, I'm not the only one out there with this kind of information. You guys know that. Uh, and I'm going to be a little bit busy over the next couple of days. So let me explain what I'm going to be doing as best I can. I'm in Phoenix now using this basically as my starting point, And I'm going to fly out of Phoenix once everything's wrapped up. I just wasn't sure that San Diego or LAX or even Vegas, there's going to be so many flight delays and cancellations and whatever that by the time I'm ready to go, forget it. Those airports are going to be rolled up. So I'm in Phoenix, and I will end in Phoenix and fly home from here uh, probably Tuesday. Or maybe I go to the Gulf Coast Tuesday. We'll see. More on that later. So the plan is I've got these remote camera boxes. I can only bring three. I'm just one person. Different people on our team just weren't available to help this weekend. So sometimes that's the way it works out. So I've got three of these remote cams that I'm going to put out over a pretty large geographic area to monitor what happens. Now, we're talking about a vast area of California and Nevada out here. There's only so much I can do. Uh, so I'm going to put one of these cameras in Pahrump, Nevada. I've got a friend and colleague that lives there. We're going to put it right on the main highway there. I think it's 160 that comes right into Pahrump. He's got a spot that he said typically floods. Pahrump could see several inches of rain. That'll be really interesting to monitor. So I'm going to put a camera there. And then I'm going to take the other two, and I'm going to make my way down to Palm Springs. Palm Springs is going to be where I basically settle in tonight. And I'll use the area around Palm Springs along I-10 as sort of my operating area. All right? I don't know exactly where. The other two cameras, one of them, I'm probably going to pick a spot along I-10 where... A dry arroyo goes underneath, a major wash. i got to look at some Google Maps and some other things and figure it out. And then plant the camera there because I am concerned that enough water is going to come cascading through. We saw it last year uh, at the California-Arizona border where parts of I-10 were washed away from heavy rain. This will exceed that in terms of the amount of rain, again, by gargantuan amounts. Um, but basically, I'm going to be operating in and around the Palm Springs area. Don't know exactly where I'll put the other two cameras, but I'll put them in spots where we can monitor what could potentially happen. Might even get down to San Diego and place one of those cameras down there. There's a road down there that's kind of caught our attention. Our back-end people that help me have been doing some research 
Um, but from Palm Springs to San Diego, that's two hours. So there's a lot of traveling to be done. So that's the general plan. I will be streaming live through the vehicle camera as long as there is service available. Some of these areas out here in the southwest, it's kind of sparse. Uh, so it'll go in and out, the vehicle cam, so just be ready for that from time to time. And, of course, I'll post on Twitter. I refuse to call it anything other than Twitter. That's just me. Uh, and so you can follow my work there. And, of course, we are on Patreon. And through Patreon, we do have a Discord server for the folks that want to help crowdfund what we do and be a part of our community. You simply go to patreon.com slash hurricane track. I'll put the link. It's already in the description. Uh, but we are on Patreon as a way to support what we do and get information that way as well. So it's just a lot of different avenues using social media, using technology, and really trying to get information out that can be useful to you here in the desert southwest because this is stressful, I'm sure. It is unusual, but the most important thing, it is real and it is going to be dangerous. So you got to take it seriously. Don't be afraid to ask questions of people on social media that you know and trust. A lot of times they will respond if you tag them or reply to one of their tweets and ask a simple question Hey, what about this? What should I do about that? A lot of times people will respond. All right? So I should be live and uh, running here from the vehicle in the next little while. By the time you see this, I should be up and running, hopefully, right? At least within the hour from when I post it. Uh, and then I'll talk to you through the stream. That'll be a, That's one of the most amazing things we have. All right. Have a great rest of your Saturday. If you're in the southwest here, get ready. It's coming, and it's going to be serious. Thanks, as always, for tuning in. Great to have all the new subscribers to the channel. I appreciate you putting your trust in my information. I'll do the best I can while I'm out here. I am Mark Suddeth. You'll hear a lot from me over the coming couple of days from the southwest. I'll see you from the road very soon.